we're going to be ranking every brawler on a tier list from how strong they have been ever in the history of Brawl Stars. So like Doug, who was released pretty weak and is still pretty weak, he's definitely gonna be the F tier because he's never been that great. Which the F tier isn't reserved for brawlers that have never been great because pretty much every brawler has had a chance. But the F tier brawlers, even though they might be good now or like pretty good at some point in history, they just haven't broken the game like other brawlers have. Next we got Bull also in the F tier. Bull's had plenty of balance changes and reworks, but he's never really been like 100% broken or even really like a top tier except for ones in beta. Please keep in mind that pretty much all of this is from memory. So like, let me know if I'm wrong or miss something. But I think F tier is pretty good for Bull in this tier list. Next we got Jesse also in the F tier. Honestly, Jesse's never really been a top tier brawler except for in big game. That's like the one place where she has had a chance to be broken. But she's also been one of the worst brawlers in the game like quite a few times. Next we have Lou in the F tier. Lou's been one of those brawlers that's only really good on certain maps. And even at his best, he was never like completely broken except maybe one time when he did receive emergency nerfs, if my memory is correct. We're also gonna put Colt in the F tier. Honestly, he was probably strongest when his silver bullet gadget was first released, but even then there were plenty of brawlers that were better than him. Colonel Ruffs is also going in the F tier. When he first released, he was actually a little bit below average because he didn't deal enough damage to really fend for himself. After they buffed that, he's always been like kind of high up in the tier list, but never like the absolute best. Nani's also in the F tier. And the funny thing about Nani is that Nani has only ever been amazing when paired up with Bo, who's using his super totem gadget. Alone, Nani's never been like game breaking, right? And a big part of that is the fact that it's so hard to hit an enemy with all three projectiles. So it's a good place for her in the F tier. Also in the F tier is Dynamite. Until recently, Dynamite has been one of the worst brawlers in the game. And now that his shots are a little bit easier to land, it's gonna take a lot of buffing to make him really a top tier brawler. Next, we also have Nita. Now, this comes with a disclaimer. Before the game was publicly released, even available to beta, okay? So in alpha, Nita could spawn unlimited bears as long as she was able to recharge up her super enough times, which, really could put her in the game breaking S tier, like just completely insane, but I never got to play that. So F tier Anita. F tier. Up next, we got Mandy. Mandy's main attack and super have always required really good aim, and she's never even been like game breakingly strong. In fact, I still don't actually like playing her very much. She is pretty good. She's pretty good, but never game breaking. Next, we have Ems. Honestly, Ems is usually just above average. She's never really received any kind of buff that's made her totally unfair, or even one of the best brawlers in the game. Up next is Rico. He was probably the strongest when his bouncy castle gadget first came out, but it only made him slightly better compared to other brawlers. It, well, I mean, he was in the F tier, but if I remember right, he he was in the S tier at one point, but being in the S tier at one point is not really game breaking. So F tier makes sense. We also have Barley in the F tier. Now, the thing about Barley is that if you don't have anything to counter Barley, then Barley is insanely strong, but he's really easy to counter. And because you can counter him, he's never really broken the game. Actually, my editor reminded me that he used to be able to stack his super on one location, which was ridiculously strong. So it's going to look like he's in the F tier for the rest of this video until the very end. But really, I feel like B tier is fine. So I'll change that in the very final ranking. Next is Maisie. And Maisie would have been at the bottom of the F tier if they didn't buff her projectile speeds shortly after her release. Since then, she's just been above average. Okay, next we got Pam finishing off the top of the F tier. And honestly, it was tough for me to decide between F tier and D tier for Pam because she's been like pretty good a lot of the time. And even before the game went global, she was a really strong pick a lot of the time, but she's never really like broken the game. Okay, next we've got the D tier brawlers. These are brawlers that have been in the S tier maybe even multiple times and maybe even needed some nerfs, but still are outshined by some other brawlers who were game-breaking. Kicking us off at the bottom of the D tier is Bo. Bo would have been in the F tier if it weren't for his circling eagle star power that used to have a seven tile radius, which absolutely made him essential on certain maps because back then there were way less ways to look in the bushes because the vision gear didn't even exist. Next, we have Willow. Honestly, Willow dealt a little bit too much damage when she was first released and had to be nerfed pretty quickly, even though it wasn't really a huge nerf. Next is Surge. Surge's old teleporting gadget made it a lot easier for him to get past those first two upgrades, and they ended up getting rid of the gadget completely because of how his super upgrade actually now works. Next, we have Buzz. Surprisingly, Buzz has only received one balance change ever, and that was actually a slight buff to his health. With that being said, his eye sharp star power did make him pretty strong, and there weren't a lot of brawlers that actually could counter his super, so D tier makes sense for him. Next, we have Terra. So most of Terra's buffs and nerfs have actually been to her main attack damage, and at one point, it was buffed a little bit too much and she was unbalanced for a short period of time, but she's still in the D tier. Frank 
Frank's also in the D tier. Frank was actually the best when he first came out. His ability was so unique and it took a long time for people to figure out how to play around it. But he didn't really need nerfs. People just learned how to play around and then he kind of sucked, honestly. Next is Otis. Otis was actually really bad when he was first released and they quickly overcorrected a lot by buffing him way too much. He didn't break the game, but assassins and tanks were pretty much useless against him for a while. Up next is B. Now B has been S tier and a lot of times, but she hasn't ever really been broken. Surprisingly enough, after drafting became the competitive format, she's actually almost always been like a safe choice. Okay, maybe a little unpopular. I'm putting Gale in the D tier. The thing is with Gale's, both of his gadgets have made him the best brawler to use on certain maps at some point, but they've both been nerfed and it wasn't even Gale that was too strong. It was just his really gimmicky gadgets. Next is Griff. Griff's piggy bank gadget allowed him to transform any map in his favor. And even though he wasn't completely overpowered, he was still the best brawler in the game at one point. Next is Gus. Gus was really weak when he was first released. And ever since they buffed him, he's been a really top tier brawler, but not game breaking. Kind of a similar story is actually Colette. She was arguably the worst brawler ever released at first, and then they buffed her. And once they buffed her, she was pretty much only using competitive matches no matter what the game mode was. Okay, next we have the C tier brawlers. These are brawlers that didn't really need emergency nerfs, but were some of the best brawlers in the game, at least at some point. Starting us off is Tick. Now, interestingly, the blast radius for his mines used to be bigger, and the pattern that they landed was random, so it was pretty much impossible to avoid. I'm really glad they changed it because Tick was even more annoying back then. Okay, next we have Chet. Chester. When he was first released, Chester was able to deal an absurd amount of, amount of damage with his Bellamania star power. He could three shot every single brawler in the game, so he had to be toned down quite a bit. Next, we have Jean. Aside from Jean being one of the most consistent brawlers like ever, for a while he dealt enough damage to where he could just could not be countered. He dealt lots of damage up close, he had plenty of range, and a gadget that kept close range brawlers away from him. He was insane. Also in the C tier, we have Max. Max is kind of similar to Jean because her super also made her very consistent and her attack is very easy to use. They recently had to nerf her damage because all five projectiles from one ammo was just so much damage that she could be used in pretty much every single game mode. Next is Bonnie. When Bonnie was first released, her melee form was dealing so much damage that she could quickly three shot any brawler in the game if she landed on them with her super. She was nutty. Also in the C tier is Belle. Belle had just as much range as Piper and there was no limit to the number of times that her attack could bounce back and forth between enemies. So if two people weren't paying attention, they would just get racked over time. Also in the C tier, we have Fang. Now, the thing about Fang's super is that it used to deal a lot of damage and his stun gadget lasted even longer than it does now, which made him just completely overpowered when he was first released. Next is Mr. P. Mr. P was just too strong when he was first released because there weren't many brawlers that could actually shoot through his porters and he dealt a lot more damage than he does now. Up next, we have Brock. And Brock actually got a buff to his main attack damage a couple of years ago and his rocket fuel gadget used to boost the damage of his rocket. So he could literally two who shot just so many brawlers when this gadget was first released. It only lasted for like one update, thankfully, because he was a nightmare. Next, we have BB. Now, shortly after BB's batting stance star power was released, she was basically unstoppable because of how much health she already had, and she was just being played pretty much every competitive match. She was insane. Up next is Byron. Now, Byron was easily the best healer in the game for a long time, and once people started figuring out combos like Byron Colette or Byron Ash, one or the other always had to be banned in competitive because it was an automatic win if you were able to get that combo. Up next, we have Carl. Honestly, Carl's been one of the hardest brawlers to balance. Sometimes he's just ridiculously strong and crazy versatile, and other times he's just trash. I can't say for sure when his best actually was, but he's been changed so many times that C tier at least makes sense for him. C tier makes a lot of sense for Crow as well. And honestly, for a lot of reasons. Honestly, whenever Supercell balances Crow, he usually shoots from the very top all the way down to the bottom, or from the very bottom all the way to the top. Like, he's been pretty good all the time. Next, we have Piper in the C tier. Now, this might surprise some of you if you did not play Brawl Stars when Piper was first released. When she was first released, she was insane. Her damage was crazy, her range was insane. Honestly, she's been one of the most broken brawlers in the game, but the fact that it lasted for so short of a time, back when very few people even played the game, makes me feel like she can only be in the C tier. Up next, we have Daryl. Now, Daryl's Steel Hoop star power used to give him a stronger shield that would last almost three seconds every single time he used his super. It was 
way overpowered. Also in beta, he could use his super to literally roll from the very bottom of the map all the way to the very top. And in heist, that meant that if Daryl charged his super, he was coming right back to your heist. Okay, next we have the B tier brawlers. These are brawlers that didn't completely wreck the game, but were definitely like the best of the best, at least at some point. Or maybe they had an emergency nerf, just a little bit better than the C tier brawlers. And kicking off the B tier is Penny. She was actually recently at her best after they completely reworked all of her gadgets and star powers. She was almost like a new brawler, so it took a little bit of time to figure out how to rebalance her. Next is Grom. And Grom's main attack used to hit the ground so fast that most brawlers didn't even have enough time to dodge the attack. Also, his super basically covered half the map and it was completely unavoidable. He really felt very unfair. Next, we have Squeak. And Squeak's residue gadget is currently one of the best gadgets in the game. And it used to last for 20 seconds instead of just 10. He could basically shut down an entire lane for the whole match and they ended up having to nerf it like really quickly. Next, we have RT. And the extra damage from RT's main attack used to be way too much. And his second star power made him almost impossible to kill while his two halves were split. They could also one shot lots of brawlers if they were hit by both halves, which was not hard to do. Next, we have Sandy. This is making me laugh because of how broken some brawlers were. <laughs> and we're only in the B tier. Sandy's super used to only require five hits and it lasted for 12 seconds instead of nine. So it was really easy to keep chaining super after super after super. And this invisibility was just up for so long. Plus, Rude Sands also dealt 200 damage per second, which was just nuts. Okay, up next we got Spike. And Spike has actually been a top tier brawler like more than any other brawler in the game. Like the number of times he's been S tier is just insane. But when he was at his prime was when they first released his curve bar, curveball star tower. The curve on it was actually even sharper than it is now. And it was insanely hard to dodge even if Spike didn't know exactly where you were. He just threw it around in bushes and like if it didn't hit somebody, you knew that bush was clear. Next we have Janet. And Janet always had really good stats and probably has the most evasive super in the game. I'd say the thing that made her most broken though was how long her gadget used to stay on the battlefield if nobody attacked it. Next, we have Amber. Amber's main attack used to be insanely strong. Her super was too strong. Her super was way too easy to charge. And worst of all, her movement speed was very fast. So almost none of the brawlers could escape the flames. If you got caught in it, you were just dead. Up next, we have Lola. And Lola was very overpowered until they made it so that her super would deal less damage depending on how close it was to herself, right? Even after that nerf, she still deals a lot of damage standing right on top of the shadow. It's insane. Okay, next we have Meg. Now, Meg was already very unbalanced when they first released her, but I think when she was really at her best was when she recently got a rework and started out in her mecha. They nerfed several things about her to make up for the rework, but it wasn't nearly enough at first. She was insane. Up next, we have Ash. Ash's rage bar was much easier to fill up when he was first released, and he had enough health to where he was actually pretty unbalanced. But what made him ridiculously strong was whenever he had a healer on his team, he was just insane. And speaking of healers, up next, we got Poco. Now, back when Draft did not exist in the competitive meta, Poco was insanely good because you could play Poco double tank and the enemy didn't know if you're going to do that or not. And if you did, it was such a strong strategy. Surprisingly though, when he was most strong was probably kind of recently when he had a huge buff to his main attack damage. <laughs> Next, we have Buster who was truly busted at first release. He dealt way too much damage, his supercharged way too fast, and even his gadget healed himself and his teammates way more than it does now. Okay, but next we've got the A tier brawlers. These brawlers required massive nerfs or the entire meta just like revolved around them. The only brawlers that were better, obviously the S tier brawlers, which we'll get to that soon. Starting off the A tier is Gray. Gray was able to teleport himself as well as his teammates instantly with his super, which ended up being ridiculously strong. Strangely enough, Jackie, who is a terrible brawler, being paired up with Gray became a way OP combination because Jackie just teleporting on you, there's nothing you can do about it. On top of that, his grand piano gadget covered an enormous area of the map, which could easily change the entire layout of any map. Next, we have Cordelius, who was just released. This is fresh on everyone's mind. He actually just had a few nerfs to his ability to charge his super while inside the Shadow Realm because he was ridiculous and you could just cycle super after super after super. He would either assassinate a brawler in the Shadow Realm, then immediately bring another enemy into it, or he could just keep the same brawler in there as long as he wanted. Like, you could not escape the Shadow Realm. Next is Sam. And this was before Sam's hearty recovery star power was nerfed. It was so good at healing him that some brawlers could not kill him. Like, it was actually impossible for them to kill him as long as he was spamming that against the wall or something like that. It was ridiculously strong. Okay, next we've got 8-Bit. And this is a funny one because he used to have a star power called Extra Life, which made him instantly respawn where he died once per game.
game and he had full HP. If I remember right, he also had an invincibility shield and all three ammo, which was just completely busted in Showdown. Surprisingly though, it wasn't good enough to be used in the other game modes, which is kind of funny and is a reason why it's not in the S tier. <laughs> okay, next we have Mortis. Mortis has had a few times when he's just been ridiculously strong. When the game was first released, he could literally dash like across your entire screen, which the screen only showed a smaller por portion of the map at that time, so it's not as impressive as it sounds, but it was still very impressive. Later on, when his Coiled Snake Star power was first released, there weren't very many Mortis counters in the game at the time, and the amount of damage that he could deal plus the amount that he healed from his super was just insane. In fact, they had to nerf that star power like four times before it was finally balanced. Up next, we have Eve. And Eve is already a top tier brawler for a lot of reasons, but when she was first released, she pretty much outranged every brawler in the game, and that was enough to make her just completely unfair, plus her spawns are annoying to deal with. <laughs> okay, next we have Edgar. Believe it or not, Edgar was really good when he was first released. Not only did he have more health, but more importantly, his super was way easier to charge, so he was just jumping all over the place during the whole match. Everyone was using him. Plus, when he was first released, he was free, so that was another reason why he was just like, always being used by everybody. <laughs> okay, next up, we have Jackie, another F tier brawler, surprisingly. Jackie's main attack used to deal way more damage, but what really made her broken was her cooldown time between each attack was like half of what it was now. So she could just, just like pound out attacks like ridiculously fast, faster than I could snap. Like if you got within range of Jackie, you were just dead. Okay, next we have El Primo. It actually wasn't very long ago that they introduced the trait that makes tanks charge their supers by taking damage. And El Primo benefited from this way more than every other brawler. He charged his super so many times per match, he didn't even have to hit enemies to charge it. There was almost no way to avoid it, so he was just jumping around just like Edgar was. Okay, next we have Shelly. And throughout the history of Brawl Stars, except for recently, Shelly was historically a terrible brawler in the game. But she reached her peak in her career when she got buffed with her movement speed going from normal up to very fast. And they greatly underestimated how much of a difference this would make for Shelly. She went from literally the worst brawler in the game to the best brawler in the game with just a movement speed buff. It was crazy, but not as crazy as these S tier brawlers. These brawlers just broke the game. Like you could not play against them. If these S tier brawlers were on the enemy team, you were smoked. Kicking us off was Stu. Stu's always been a top tier brawler despite getting several nerfs over the years. But when he was first released, his super would knock enemies back, which was just insane because like brawlers couldn't do anything against it. And if you didn't experience how broken it was, you can at least imagine how rough it was. Like, you were getting interrupted all the time. He was just knocking you all over the place. He could travel across the entire map like a maniac. He was insane. Not quite as insane as Leon, though, also in the S tier. <laughs> Leon used to deal just crazy amounts of damage at close range, and you could not see him using his super unless he was literally right next to you. So it was so easy to assassinate any brawler and then chain into the next super. Like, when Leon was first released right before Global, he was just busted. And Hank was also busted, also in the S tier. He actually had a bug when he was first released that made him way broken in Showdown. But even in every other game mode, being able to hide in the grass while charging his bubble made him impossible to get close to. They obviously gave him several nerfs, but they were actually a little bit too harsh because now he's one of the worst, worst brawlers in the game. But when he first released, he was broken. But easily the most toxic brawler in the game was probably Sprout. You could not destroy it super after respawning with invulnerability ability, so it would easily just trap the entire team inside of a Brawl Ball goal. On top of that, the blast radius from his overgrowth star power was crazy. You could not dodge it. If I remember right, it happened with every attack. Like, Sprout was busted, and his super was just crazy. But I think the best brawler of all time really could be Rosa. Rosa's shield used to last for six seconds and block 80% of all damage dealt to her. Just to give you some reference for how strong that is, a max out Rosa now with an 80% shield would have the equivalent of 40,500 health. <laughs> like, there was nothing you could do. As soon as she charged her super, she could get anywhere on the map and could easily recharge her super before the first one ever ran out of time. They literally had to keep nerfing her over and over and over again for two months until she was at least sort of balanced. And there you have the tier list ranked from every brawler worst to best based off of when they were at their peak. Honestly, it was pretty fun to like think back and reminisce on all of these things and I'm curious to know what some of your guys' thoughts are. I probably missed some stuff so let me know in the comment section below if I forgot anything. For right now make sure you guys
guys subscribe for future content. And here is a tier list showing how strong all the brawlers are in the game, at least right now. For now, this is Kairos. I'm ticking. Bye. We will see you in Brawl Stars.